Welcome back everyone, I'm back here again with Lee. Today we're going to be talking about our Smart Fabric V3. So Lee, we've had a few versions of the Smart Fabric, haven't we? We're now on version 3, but before that we've had some non-antibacterial, some antibacterial, and now we're on the V3. Can you just talk us through the, the build-up or the evolution of this product? So the original version was based on fluoropolymer technology. Um, the issue with that is that there's a lot of environmental hazards and bioaccumulation with these sort of products, so we decided to move away from that. There are still some that you can still use, but more and more they're becoming banned. Um, very high level of efficiency, but it's not something we want to be associated with. So we've moved to an active silicon technology instead. With V2, we had the non-AB and the AB version, um, and now we've moved to V3 where we've actually increased the amount of silicon water repellents. So that gives um, extra durability, but we've also brought in some more antimicrobial technology. So it's now antibacterial, but it's also anti-mold and mildew as well. And in terms of sort of the anti-mold and anti-mildew, it's quite different to being antibacterial, isn't it? Because in terms of sort of the size of microbe, you know, mold is essentially picture a six foot guy standing yeah. next to a very, very short person, which is a bacteria. Probably even more than that. If, um, if a bacteria is the size of this bottle, then mold and mildew microbes are about the size of us. So there's a huge difference, and therefore it's much more difficult to, to kill them off or to stop them from growing. Um, but we managed to find the, the balance of both in here. So. so the good thing is, is actually this is an even better performing product than any of our previous versions because, yes, we had the antibacterial element, but now yeah. we've got the anti-mould and the anti-mildew um, aspects as well. So um, just to, I guess, visualise it for people, uh, on the screen you can see on the left-hand side you've got a Petri dish which is treated with our product. Yep. Um, on the right-hand side you've got something that hasn't been treated um, yes. And in the middle, there's a, a, what we would class as a marketing leading competitor. Yeah. And there's quite a stark difference, isn't there, between the three? Yeah, so as you can see on the, the one that's been treated with Smart Fabric V3, there's no um, bacterial growth at all. So to do this, we've taken these small bits of cotton, treated them with the various um, fabric protectors, and then exposed them to Aspergillus niger, which is black mold. As you can see, it's failed to grow on the one that's been treated with smart fabric. Um, just as a bit of a disclaimer here, we're not making any claims that this is a disinfectant product. So it's not being used as that. This is a coating. This is to protect the fabric. Um, and the antifungal action is part of protecting the fabric. Um, because what will happen is, as this black mold grows, it's actually gonna use the fabric as a food source and eat away at it and cause it to rot and break down. So by stopping the growth of the black mould or any other fungi, mould and mildew, we're actually protecting your fabric, be that your soft top roof, your seats, whatever it is. So it's almost as well as protecting, it's almost increasing the longevity of the, yeah, the, the fabric. Yeah, the, the lifetime of the fabric, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not just the appearance, obviously, when you get black mould growth, it's very unsightly, but it doesn't have to sporulate in this nature for it to start damaging the fabric. Okay. Uh, and we also make some claims on our packaging that we, we, we outlast the competition by four times. Um, yep. Can you give us a little bit of insight into the testing methodology and, and, and how that's enabled us to come to that conclusion? Um, yeah, so with this, this was do the, the water repellency testing that we test by a standardised test, which is AATCC 22. Um, and also we've run a, an ISO test, which is ISO uh, 6330. And this is a, a wash cycle test. So essentially we've coated out fabrics and we've put them into a washing machine. Um, this is a standardised industrial washing machine with, um, and it has to be calibrated and everything. So it's a, a lot more sophisticated than your... It's not your home washing no, machine. No, no, not at all. Um, and then we go through wash cycles and then just keep testing to see if the product is still performing. Um, and in running that test, again, we've, we've benchmarked against leading competitors out there, some big brand names. Um, we've seen that we've actually got four times the durability. Um, wow. So we know that it's a very tough product. It's going to last. Um, be that on your soft top roof where it's, you know, it's got all the external weathering, etc. 
will be in your seats, especially your driver's seat that you're in and out of every day. This is going to last, so you're not you're not going to get a week's results. It's going to give you a good length of performance. So the point is here, we've actually used industry standards. We've used independent, yes. yeah. if you like equipment, so standardised independent equipment to, to validate yeah. this these these testings and the claims that we. Yeah. Made. So um, for the antibacterial test, then we test against gram positive and gram negative bacteria. We use a third party. It's a test house called MSL, who are very highly accredited, very large test company. Um, and they tested against ISO 20743, which is, again, it's a standardized textile test for bacterial growth. Same thing again, we're not, there's no disinfectant claims here, but it is a function of the coating. So it's a secondary function. Um, and we got the 99.99% um, lack of growth there. Um, so I guess essentially what we've got here, we've got some antibacterial properties which have been you know, thoroughly tested. Yep. We've got the water repellency and it all comes together just to create and formulate a, a fantastic product. Yes, yeah. So again, the design of this product is to protect your fabric. So be that your car seats, your carpets, your soft top roof. Um, within that, they can be damaged by bacteria, by fungal growth, by spills. So its primary function is as a water repellent. So if you spill your, your cup of coffee, etc., it's not going to soak it in stain. It's going to make it much easier to clean, remove. If you've got pets, if you've got children, it's just going to keep the inside of your car cleaner. Same with your soft top, it's going to increase um, the water repellency of it. And with that, keeping it dry, that's going to make it harder for any fungal growth or bacterial growth there, because obviously you need water for these things to happen. But then you also have the antimicrobial additives in there to prevent any further damage going on. And I guess just to really highlight those sort of the water repellent uh, points, really, we've got this spray rig, haven't we, in our lab? Yes. Where we can now see that we've got an untreated piece. Yeah. Of so this is the ATCC twenty two test. Um, so this is basically how you test water repellency of fabrics. It's a standardised international test. So as you can see here, so this is an untreated piece of fabric. So you pour a set amount of water onto it and the, the spray head emulates rainwater essentially. So what a piece of fabric would experience. And you can see that water soaking straight yeah, in. Yeah, soaked straight into it. So this is a completely untreated bit of fabric. So this is kind of the worst case scenario. And this would be scored as a zero. And then you can now see that we've got this treated piece of fabric yes. and the water is literally just flying off the piece yeah, of fabric. Yeah, it's just bouncing off. So this would be a score of 100. So this is fully water repellent. You see the water's beading up and rolling off, which is the effect that you want. And this is where we, I guess, where we see that our product keeps this water repellency going for four times longer yes. than yeah. the nearest competition. So obviously these, these bits of fabric have just been treated and they've not been put on any duress yet. But with any sort of abrasion or washing or all the other factors that will come into the, how the fabric's gonna be experiencing in the real life, um, this is gonna last four times longer than a lot of the products that are out there. Brilliant. Um, and in terms of application, um, not an awful lot's changed, has it really? No, no, exactly the same. Um, we do, unless we have a product that's difficult to apply, we'd try to make it easier to apply. This couldn't really be any easier. You spray it on. You can agitate it in a little bit if you wish, especially on soft tops. Some people like to use a soft bristle brush just to make sure it's all in there. But this is an alcohol-based product, and the alcohol is actually a superb wetting agent. So it will actually spread and disperse through the fabric very efficiently just by itself, just by spraying it on. You don't want to. You want to get good surface coverage. You don't want to oversaturate it. Um, so you just go around till it's all covered. It will dry in a few hours. Um, from that point, you will have good water repellency. It takes about 16 hours, 16 to 24, to get really up to its full 100% rating. Um, but the, the advantage of this is over a water-based product, that would take a minimum of 24 hours to drive. So you wouldn't be able to dry your, drive your car for a whole day after applying it, whereas this, in a couple of hours, and with some good ventilation, you can be able to sit in your car and drive. So uh, as, well, as well as sort of smelling a bit pokey, th there's actually yeah. a reason why it smells like that, because of the alcohol, because yeah. if it was water-based, yeah. it would take a lot longer to Yeah, there's, there's two factors. One, it dries much quicker than water. Um, 
it evaporates off much more quickly than water would do. Um, so that means your seats can be dry, you know, much quicker than a water-based product. And as well, the uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is the same product that's used in hand sanitizers. Um, this, like I say, this is a wetting agent, so it will disperse throughout the fibres. So you get an even dispersion of all the silicon water, water repellents before the IPA evaporates off. Um, with a water-based one, that you're not going to get that level of efficiency. And again, with this, it is literally just one coat, very even coat. I yeah. mean, you can get, like you, said, like you mentioned earlier, a, a brush, or maybe if you've got some, you know, wearing some gloves, you can yeah, rub, a rub it into glove, the surface uh, with the tip of your fingers. Yeah, cloth, these type of things, yeah. Yeah, so very simple, very, yeah. very simple application. Uh, in terms of fibres, so things like thinking about Alcantara fabric, they're slightly different in fibre length, but it's still compatible with all those types yes, of fibres. Yes, again, just making sure you're not oversaturating, but we've, we've tested Alcantara and various other fabrics that are out there and a few other problem ones. Um, mohair for soft tops, all these type of things, just to make sure that it's not going to discolour anything, it's going to give you a nice even coverage. So we've tested a full range of that and we're very confident that this can be used on any fabric that's going to be in any car at all. And, and outside of that, I know some people like to use these things at home. I'm guessing that what we say to them is, is just test for colour fastness first because yes. automotive fabric is, can be different uh, to in, you know, home or... Yeah. I'd advise fabric. against using on any clothes, especially with anything, any logos, because of the dye printing process that is used and the IPA can actually make those colours bleed. So you'd end up with your colours running out. It's not designed for apparel. Um, we are working on a, a product for that as part of our bike range. Um, but if you really want to use this, it's not what it's been designed for. So obviously check first and avoid anything that's got any logos or any printing on it. But for sort of automotive fabrics, maybe some domestics or carpets, sofas, things Carpet, like that. Carpets, sofas, for colour yeah. Fastness. yeah, check for colour fastness first. But yeah, we'll, we'll be confident in that working. Okay. And then um, just a point around soft tops as well, because yes. people notice now that, and we've talked about the antibacterial properties, it has antibacterial on the label. Um, there were some misconceptions around applying some of our antibacterial products to soft tops. Yes, I and mean, this was to do with the fact that we used to use a silver iron technology, so it was a powder, and it could actually, on the black soft top, you could actually see it. Um, the new technology we're using here is a clear liquid-based antimicrobial additive. So it will disperse evenly through any fabric, and you're not going to be able to see it. So that, that's another advantage of this product. That it can be used um, interiors, exteriors, soft tops, anything at all so any automobile fabrics this is suitable for awesome okay well thank you for joining us don't forget to share like and subscribe and we'll see you next time